Tony and Big Tony join the family. Tony and Big Tony join the family. There's Tony and Wanda and Big Tony too. We make our videos just for you. Tony and Big Tony join the family. Tony and Big Tony join the family. Because to me, canoeing is one of the scout things, like hiking, camping, first aid, fire starting. I mean, I know computer games are, are good, are fun, but this is like the meat, the, the meat potatoes of scouting. Uh, we had about eight scouts signed up. And then in a two week period, uh, people dropped out like flies. We wound up with three scouts, Simon, Xander, and Mark Jr. Their dads, Dave, Cliff, and me, and Chief Tim, and Miss Debbie. Miss Debbie was the only lady there. Uh, we, uh, we left on Friday night and got there late and uh, got our campsite, got situated, and had a nine o'clock set in the river call. There was a group in front of us that had maybe about 50 people. So we didn't get close to the river or doing our thing until like 10.30, 11 o'clock. When we put in at the river, I think everybody between the ages of 15 and 35 in the three county area was on the lake that time. Um, and they brought their beer with them. And they brought their beer with them and their music. Dogs. It was a, it was a, it was a party. Um, and the, and the first day we did 17 and a half miles. Wow. Which... <laughs> it's long. Miss <laughs> Debbie, talk about that first day. Well, I don't know. I, you don't know? The first, it was, it was, it was crazy until we got to Blue Rock. And then after Blue Rock, it was just us. They were... Blue Rock <laughs> is seven and a half miles from the pullout point. But, um... Yeah, we had one canoe flip over. In the first five minutes. In the first five minutes. <laughs> oh, he was just barely across the river and still inside of the bridge. Yeah. yeah. We're going to do it to go big, right? So Get it done over get with. Get it done, get it over with, so yeah. And then um, another one went over later. Uh, we we saw they had so much fun, so Junior and I decided to try it. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wanted to swamp the canoe and see how they could get, it, get the water back out. Yeah, a good lesson to learn. And we had to be back by 6 o'clock, and at the end we were noticing we were kind of coming close on that time. So we were all paddling really, really hard and fast the last time we got in 5.30, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And we learned a big lesson too, that you need to go ahead and take your shower not long after you get back to the campsite. Because if not, if you sit around a chair, you're going to fall asleep and then go into bed. <laughs> Sometimes you're even so tired that you miss dinner because you're all <laughs> um, The next day we got up and we did the... It was kind of funny on, on oh. the... On, no, the staff did. The, oh, you know, he said know. after we passed Blue Rock, you know, we were, they kept saying, Mr. Pierce, when are we going to get there? Hour and a half. When are we going to get there? Hour and a half. Hour and a half. When are we going to get there? Hour and a half. And we kept right in the bin, one last bin. Mr. Pierce, all we we gonna get there? Hour and a half. We round the bend, and there's the pullout point. He's like, "Oh man!" <laughs> it took me about three hours to figure an hour and a half wasn't right. <laughs> and so that that was the first day. The second day, we did seven and a half miles. Do you want to talk about? Uh, it was like you got to see a lot more because, like. You do the first 10 miles, and then the seven and a half miles is like Blue Rock, and after. So by Blue Rock, we were all really tired, so we didn't really notice anything about the scenery or anything. So that's when we actually like looked at the surroundings and all. And yeah. Also, they flipped over. <laughs> <laughs> now, and everybody knows that Tim learned how to move with Lord Baden Powell. And it, we still had barch burke on the outside of our canoe. He probably had to make one, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so did she. They had to outdo everything. She actually started canoeing before I did. She started at 8, I started at 10. And that's, that's a long time ago. Because I learned at Girl Scout. <laughs> we got to push the Girl but, Scouts every once in a while. Okay. <laughs> but, um, but we did not want to be outdone. Well, I tell you what, Cliff, why don't you describe the. <laughs> <laughs> 
happened to the dog. Well, it's kind because of a, it's, we, it's, we got a chain reaction is really what happened. The first day, we chain, we the position where the boys were in the bow, we were in the, the adults were in the stern. Okay, so of course that takes a little bit of learning how to control and learning what you're doing and. and for whatever reason, with he and I, with that arrangement, going straight is, is kind of a challenge, let's put it that way. Okay. So the second day, we go into Blue Rock, we've reversed everything. So we thought we'll put the adults in the front, boys in the back. That was the way that we should have always been, as far as he and I are concerned. We were dead on straight for that. They all looked at me like I was crazy when I told them to do it. Yeah, so it, it worked out great. Well, we did. We're almost, I think we're pretty well, at least halfway down, and there's this, they've had some flooding down there. Okay, so it's changed the river. And there's, there's a tree that has fallen in right in a deep, rapid area. And it's sticking three-fourths the way across. Um, so yesterday, we hit it kind of sideways and bounced off of it. So I thought, well, today, we'll just try to go as far left as we can, as fast as we can, and just get around it. Well, that didn't work. So we, it, it, it hit the canoe, and then we hit, we tried to lean back, no go. We flipped, okay? Well, no, we swamped. We didn't flip. So we got up, got our canoe out of the way, but everybody was kind of in a line, as you can imagine. We had space, but then when David and Simon came behind, it flipped them sideways. They didn't flip, but they blocked the channel. And we were already committed. And they were already committed. So when we they got up. down, they swung broadside to it, but it was really heavy rapids. It was probably about four or five feet, almost six feet deep, moving pretty quick. And with them trying to hold themselves and we're trying to get these guys out of the way, the back of their canoe hit like this and then Tim says, ah, we're, we're over. And we're going in. Yeah, it, it flipped <laughs> over. So then it got a little tense there for a minute because Chief was underwater for at least 10 seconds, almost 15. And we were worried that he was caught under there. And so when he popped back up, then we kind of had to fight to get the canoe out and had it like a submarine going under the it. But it was, it, it was, was tense. It was very, it was tense. For I usually look back, it was quite fun. Yeah, <laughs> it was. <laughs> well, yeah. our combined canoeing, we have never tipped a canoe to me, ever. Okay. So we're going through, and it goes under, so I reach up, grab my brim hat, pull it down over my glasses, and I tuck, because I'm underneath the canoe. And it was rolling under, and I knew it. So one of the safety things, and the scouts, I told them about this one time I learned a long time ago, if you go under, and you're under a snag, tuck as small as you can, and as long as you're rolling, you're good. Quite a bit, yeah. Because I came up about what 75 feet down, yeah, down the stream. Because you're you're beyond it. <laughs> it was stuck. So we got back up. Miss Brave Soul here runs out to Miss Debbie as she's spitting and sputtering like a little butt butt engine trying to come up. And he's Miss Debbie, Miss Debbie, I can't take my legs out from under me every time I try to stand up. <laughs> so good on him, yeah. looking out for folks. Uh -huh. And then I get back up there. I grab my hat. Fling it over to Simon. Simon grabs it, throws it down in his canoe. Then I see Miss Debbie's brand new Grimes Canoe Base t shirt that I just bought her less than 12 hours ago. <laughs> Coming down. And I reach out to grab it. My feet slip out from under me. My glasses go forward. I go down. I grab the shirt. I come up. And my wedding ring's gone too. Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that shirt cost eight dollars. Yeah, a lot less than the wedding. Day. <laughs> so anyway, we'll and then Cliff's it. out there standing on it. Debbie's on. And he's worked her way back. Yeah, I was up on top Cliff's of the tree trying, trying to, to rock it. Where it was. Cliff's trying to rock it, standing in it, trying to rock it out from under the strainer. That's the tree that's laying out there. I found the throw bag, which is a bright fluorescent orange bag. Right, it's got rope in it. I reach down there, just barely head out of the water, and I yell at the cliff. I say, get off. He says, no. I said, get off. He said, if this thing breaks free, it's going to take you with it. I said, that's the plan. <laughs> so he gets off, and sure enough, as soon as I can lift the bow, I knew if I lifted the bow, the current would sweep the stern out from under the tree. It did, came around, and I just rolled down the river beside it. By the time I got to an eddy, unswamped it. Here comes Miss Debbie down the river. <laughs> you float along? Yeah. So we had a great time. Well, during that time period, we were the number two boat behind the cliff. And we were shooting down there, and Cliff said, Go on, go on. And so we're going on, and we tried to stop 
and I was in the bow. We try to stop to uh, either go back or, or wait for them, and I grab a branch from a tree hand over. The problem is, yeah, the problem is the stern turned all the way around, so then we're going backwards down the river and hitting another thing with rapids. So that's where Junior and I went to turn off their little fun. <laughs> but um, I think we got to watch it. No, I didn't watch you guys. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I missed yeah. all that. We were like, we saw like paddles and equipment. Yeah, all the yeah. yeah, I missed the paddles. They, they I said, that looks like one of our paddles. <laughs> they were rescuing stuff. Um, I know it sounds kind of strange and um, dangerous what we did, but I think everybody really had a really good time. Uh, and we got slushies at first, though, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> we did it in. And uh, the camp is open. First week in April, the first week, it goes until the end of October. So we leaders that were down there, and we stayed in Adirondacks, which are hard shell, three wall tents, got hard three wall cabins, right? And they got tent flaps in front. And they got cots inside. Uh, so we all were kind of talking that maybe we might make this a later in the fall thing. We thought it'd be kind of cool to go down the river looking at the beautiful trees during the winter, right after, right after season, if it happens. So we're kind of thinking on that and keeping that back in the back. And we also, if, if we don't do that, we also talk about making this an annual thing. Because um, if we do the same thing again, it was 25 miles. Now I'm going to go ahead and give up the patches for everybody. He was there except for Miss Debbie. She didn't get one. She <laughs> keep telling me that. I'll beat you up. Father. Oh, and she was the. She was. <laughs> I fed you. She was. I did. One, one meal. Oh, but it was Mr. one egg of a meal. <laughs> now, she was the grub master for the old goat patrol. Or the cart. Or the cart patrol. Now, um, when I got the patches, uh, I said, okay, I need patches for the base. Said, okay, I'm this said, and I need the 25 mile patch. He says, you don't buy those. And I was like, oh, great. We're going to make them or order them ourselves. He goes, no, no, you earn those patches. So the 25 mile patch, Buffalo River, everybody gets one of those too. Now, if you go in future ones, you get 50 mile, and there's ones, there's, there's, Paddles and all that troops have come in, and for a week, I think they did about 450 miles. Yeah, it was like 475 or 480 yeah. or something like that. I mean, they did a whole lot of mileage. So these are 20, yeah, you get those two. These are all the 25 milers. So I want to thank, I was the uh, the event seat, um, scout master on this, and uh, I think everybody had a pretty good time, apart from the extra swoon we didn't plan on doing. But, um, there was added costs. You don't even want to talk about added costs. Yeah, yeah. With classes, wedding rings. Yeah. We won't talk. Well, I wasn't going to say it. I was going to say it. Lost two phones, too. But I, I think I think everybody, well, I mean, I think everybody kind of would like to do it again. So um, kind of think about we're it in. next year. Yep. Uh, we're going to plan this again. So, um, and ladies can come, too. And, the facilities uh, are very nice, surprisingly. It's yes. a very nice base. I mean, the, the, not only the tents are nice, but I mean, the bathrooms, showers, oh, yeah. all oh, that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a very nice camp. Yeah. It really is. It's a little less for tents like one of them. Yeah. Yeah. This is the one that's got the most out of Rand and the largest space for Scott's tents. And uh, I just want to thank everybody for, for going, and I had a really good time, so thank you. I missed y'all going. Really good. Oh, why do you love your wedding?